Hello and welcome back. This week we'll look at the birth of the modern world in our study of history from 1500 to the present. Up until now we've been talking about what we might call pre-modern societies. The word modern, as used by historians, is usually applied to events beginning after 1750. We'll use it to describe the Atlantic Revolutions, profound political changes that emerged on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean between the end of the 18th and the middle of the 19th century. We'll begin with the revolution in the English colonies of North America in the 1770s. Then we'll move to the French Revolution in 1789 and consider the effects of both revolutions on Europe in their wake. We'll also study a slave rebellion in the French colony of Haiti in 1791 that led to the establishment of the Republic of Haiti, the first independent black republic in the world. Finally, we'll learn about the political changes that swept through the Spanish colonies in the Americas between 1808 and 1824 that created the modern nations of Latin America. This week also marks a new approach to learning in this course. In the past weeks, you've watched introductory videos that describe in modest detail the historical narrative of the periods we've covered. Starting this week, you'll become a more active participant in the building of that historical narrative. In effect, you'll become the historian, analyzing text and answering the big historical questions of the topics we study. Doing so will require that you use the analytical tools you've developed in evaluating sources for your information literacy blogs, tools that will aid you in developing a critical interpretation of historical events, their causes, and their impact on our world today. In many ways, this shift in analytical approach parallels the revolutionary transformations we study this week. The Atlantic revolutions were inspired by political thinkers who aimed to radically alter the relationship between government and its citizens. Influenced by the scientific revolution, and driven by ideas of equality and democracies, Enlightenment thinkers, in particular Locke, Montesquieu, Voltaire, and Rousseau, challenged the long-established tradition of monarchical rule in Europe and the Americas. The revolutionary movements were first sparked in North America with the Declaration of Independence from the British Crown and the creation of the United States in 1776. Other revolutions quickly followed, and within less than 50 years, the seeds of revolution had spread throughout Europe. Most of the Americas had won their independence from colonial rule and established new sovereign nations without kings or queens. The political theories that underlay much of this revolutionary activity were the work of John Locke an English philosopher whose ideas on politics and the origins and purpose of the state had a sweeping influence on the Enlightenment thinking that emerged in the late 17th century. Central to Locke's view was the notion that all humans are born equal and that all individuals enjoy what he called natural rights. Locke outlined these ideas in his Two Treatises on Civil Government, which was published in 1690. For Locke, the three natural rights are life, liberty, and property. The right to life means literally the right not to be killed. The right to liberty means the right to act as you wish, so long as you don't interfere with someone else's right to act as they wish. And finally, the right to property means the right to the fruits of your labor. Because these were natural rights, they originated with nature, and were not conferred by a monarch, they could also not be taken away. As such, Locke argued that the government's responsibility was to protect its people's natural rights. The theory of a social contract, that is, an implicit agreement among the members of a society to cooperate for mutual benefits, dictated that the government's role was to represent and not reign over or oppress the people. If the government didn't represent its people and defend their natural rights, the people were entitled to replace their government. This notion 
of equal representation challenged the very core of traditional monarchical rule. Locke's ideas were extended by other influential Enlightenment thinkers, in particular three French philosophers, Montesquieu, who argued that government should be divided into legislative, executive, and judicial branches, and be guided by a system of checks and balances, ensuring that no one branch was more powerful than another. Voltaire, who wrote numerous essays, plays, and political satires targeting the king, the French state, and the Catholic Church. And Rousseau, whose notion of a general will became a cornerstone of any democratic claim to political legitimacy. Although originating in Europe, Enlightenment ideas initially had their biggest impact in North America, where, in 1776, English colonists broke their ties to the British Kingdom and declared themselves independent. The founding of the United States of America represents the first application of Enlightenment thought to political practice. The Declaration of Independence had as its premise the equality of all men and the defense of every individual's right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This famous phrase was only a slight departure from the natural rights that Locke had described almost a century earlier. But the American Revolution was not just a result of new ideas encouraging a change in political structure. It also was tied to grievances held by the colonists against the British king. The most famous was the issue of taxation without representation. Had the British Empire not imposed higher taxes on their North American colonists to help pay for a war against France, the American Revolution might never have happened. This is a key point to underline, since it leads to an important question. Do radical ideas automatically foment revolutionary change? In other words, do revolutions occur just because a philosopher argues in favor of changing the political structure? The answer is almost definitively no. Just because an idea is appealing doesn't mean that the general population will risk their lives to adopt it. Revolutions typically occur as a result of two factors. First, the ideas. Second, a social or political crisis. Without a crisis making people desperate enough, from deep economic suffering to starvation to emotional duress, ideas are not enough to incite revolutions. In the case of the American colonies, the crisis would come in the form of disputes over political representation that led to confrontations with British troops and the eventual Declaration of Independence in 1776. The ensuing War of Independence lasted six years. Even though the Americans were fighting a much more formidable enemy, after all, the British Empire possessed the most powerful army of the period, the physical distance from England, coupled with the military assistance of the French, played in favor of the young United States. By 1781, the last English troops surrendered to General George Washington. David had defeated Goliath, and the Enlightenment ideas, for the first time, defeated traditional monarchical absolutism. The victory would extend further. Over the next 40 years, the American Revolution served as an example, not only for the peoples of France, but also for Latin Americans, who rose up to assert their rights and force radical social and political change. By 1821, most of Latin America was independent of the Spanish Empire. Of the Atlantic revolutions, the most extreme was the French. Like the American Revolution that inspired it, the French Revolution arose from a severe social and economic crisis, a fiscal calamity compounded by drought and bread shortages in Paris led to an eruption of popular violence on July 14, 1789, as hungry Parisians assaulted the Bastille, a royal fortress and prison. The turmoil that followed shook the foundations of French aristocratic society, purging those who were considered enemies of the people. The mayhem culminated with the infamous Reign of Terror, 
during which over 16,000 were killed for opposing the revolution, including the King of France, Louis XVI. The French Revolution transformed large parts of Europe. The French Constitution of 1791, founded on the principles of liberty, equality, and fraternity, led to a new republican form of government. It proclaimed that all men are created equal, asserted the sovereignty of the people, abolished titles of nobility, and banned slavery. Although the French Revolution eventually would fall prey to internal divisions and external military attacks from other European monarchies, its most famous military leader, Napoleon Bonaparte, expanded France's dominion across the European continent, setting up one of the largest empires in modern European history. However, by 1815, the French had been defeated, Napoleon was exiled, and a king, Louis XVIII, was back on the throne. Nonetheless, the genie was out of the bottle. Enlightenment ideas had spread across Europe, laying the foundation for future revolutions. In the end, the less radical approach of the American Revolution ensured its success as opposed to its French counterpart. But a question remains. Was the American Revolution really revolutionary? True, a colonial monarch was replaced by a representative government based on Locke's concept of natural rights and the notion of a social contract. However, Equality in the newly founded United States was not inclusive. Real equality extended mostly to the privileged class, that is, white male property owners. Almost everyone else, from slaves to Native Americans to women, was excluded. Slavery would persist in the U.S. for another 90 years, and women would not obtain the right to vote until 1920. So, while the American Revolution sparked the birth of modernity and the rise of modern democracy, the social hierarchy remained largely unchanged into the 20th century. In our next unit, we'll examine two new sources of power awakening in the aftermath of the Enlightenment, specifically ideology and nationalism. Until then, best wishes. <laughs>